basic terminologies, we will go into the modes of ventilator. The first is the controlled mandatory ventilation. It's a totally controlled mode where the patient has no role to play. After that, we have the assist control where the patient can trigger or start a breath, but the rest of the breath is totally controlled by the ventilator. And SIMV, where the patient breaths are supported only to a certain limit. And a spontaneous is that the patient himself is taking the whole breath and the ventilator has less role to play in it. So this is from a totally controlled to a patient uh, dependent modes. In controlled mechanical ventilation, all breaths are initiated and delivered by the ventilator with patient taking no active role in the ventilatory cycle. So you have either a pressure controlled or a volume controlled mode where either you set a pressure or a volume to be delivered. And even if the patient breathes, the ventilator will not recognize the breath and only deliver the breath in the next cycle. That is, it is totally time, uh, time cycle. In control modes of ventilation in the volume control. So what do we set in the volume control? We set a tidy volume for the patient. We set his respiratory rate. So, so we can reach a adequate minute volume. We set the IE ratio. We set the FiO2 and we set the P. In the pressure control, we set the pressure control. And at the same time, we keep seeing how much tidal volume the patient is generating. In the volume control, when we set the tidal volume, we should keep an eye on the airway pressures. So, pressure control, you set a pressure, look for the, how much tidal volumes you are generating. Accordingly, we can set the respiratory rate to reach a targeted minute volume, IE ratio, FiO2 and the peak. In SS control ventilation, now we had a uh, control mandatory ventilation where even if the patient had the breath or tried to breathe or tried to trigger a breath, the ventilator would not recognize it and would not give the breath. In this, when the patient tries to start a breath, the ventilator recognizes it immediately, but then it delivers the breath totally as per either the set tidal volume or the set pressure volume, pressure. So, patient can start the breath, the ventilator will uh, recognize it, but then the, after that the patient is totally supported by the ventilator. So this, in this the patient comfort is more, only disadvantage in this is, if the patient is triggering too often, you can have respiratory alkalosis, high respiratory rate and respiratory alkalosis. Synchronized intermittent mandatory ventilation. Now we had a control mandatory ventilation, where the there was no role of the patient. Then we had the uh, assist control ventilation where the patient could trigger a breath, but then after that, the entire work was done by the ventilator. Now in the synchronized mandatory, intermittent mandatory ventilation, the ventilator delivers its set breaths at a set rate, but in between, if the patient tries to breathe, it recognizes the breath as per the trigger and then supports that usually with a set pressure support. So in SIMV, again volume control, pressure control, in addition to what we had set in the uh, control mandatory ventilation, we also set a pressure support. So this pressure support is when in the middle of the patient is trying to breathe, it will support till a pressure which has been set earlier. So this is the tidal volume which is generated by a pressure which has been set earlier. So this is like a and we set a trigger. A trigger is set because now the ventilator wants to know at what level it should feel that the patient is trying to take a breath and then uh, go into the inspiration mode. And spontaneous pressure ventilation is the breathing rate is independent with the help of the pressure support. So now there is no mandatory breath being given, but each breath is supported to a particular pressure support. So this is done when the patient is breathing but not adequately enough to maintain his tidal volume. So in this, we set the FiO2, we set the P, we set the pressure support. After that, we monitor the tidal volume, which is generated, and we set a trigger, which the ventilator must recognize. 
after all this we must also look at the complications of the ventilate mechanical ventilation so what are the complications respiratory are pulmonary damage and volume trauma so if too much of volume is there, given to the ventilator there will be volume trauma if there is stick flung and you are trying to push in too much of volume then you might have barrow trauma cardiovascular because of intermittent or positive ventilation the venous return is reduced and that also can cause reduce in cardiac output and a reduce in the blood pressure because of endotracheal tubes and tracheostomy tubes etc and the ventilated circuits and not handling those things well you can also patient can also develop a nosocomial pneumonia so these are all the complications of a mechanical ventilator we must remember there are two parts of ventilation and what we must monitor one is a ventilation aspect and one is the oxygenation aspect when we see the abg the ph and the pco2 will give you an idea of the ventilation and the po2 and the spo2 bicarb will give you an idea of the oxygenation we will see that in the cases which we follow all these we were talking about over the non invasive ventilators we also have the uh, sorry the invasive ventilators now we also have the non invasive ventilator where you have a tight fitting mask on the patient's face and there is support from the ventilator so you have two types there is a cpap and a bipap the cpap a single pressure is applied all through the uh, cycle and it keeps the airway open in the bipap you have a basic pressure applied on the airway plus you give a pressure support with every breath indications for is this in type 2 respiratory failure when patient is not breathing enough you want to give him some pressure support or you have tried extubation and has failed so you might give an extubation post extubation failure you might give a trial of niv but for this the patient should be absolutely awake and should be breathing on his own also he should not have any significant facial trauma so that the mask can fit well although nowadays we have the helmet mask alarms and indications when should you have the ventilators you should know what the alarms are the ventilator is designed to monitor many aspects of the patient's respiratory status and we need to set each and every alarm so that we can be warned so whenever we see a ventilator we have set all the modes we have set the parameters of the modes we always forget to set our alarms as per the patient's settings we need to set the alarm limits around 10 to 15% higher or lower than the higher and upper acceptable and upper and lower limits of the patient's values so that we don't miss small things so different alarms are the high or low pressure alarms high or low minute, uh, minute volume alarms high or low respiratory rate so if you have a high alarm you will know or you will want to make changes you look for Or tube problems, you might look for ventilator problems. Low pressure alarms might tell you that there is a leak in the system. High or low volume, minute volume is also. If there is a high minute volume, you need to know that the compliance is too good, and maybe you need to go down in your pressure supports. A low minute volume is maybe you need to increase the ventilator support. A high respiratory rate needs to be put down with maybe a sedation, maybe the patient has fever or anxiety. a low respiratory rate patient may require higher support of the ventilator so all these alarms and electric power uh, electrical power etc are machine input alarms so like we discussed high pressure alarms are because of sec secretions in the airway or some block in the airway they may be kink in the ventilator tubing patient biting coughing or increase airway pressures due to bronchospasm low pressure alarms is usually due to disconnection or maybe a leak in the circuit leak in the cuff or displaced intracranial tube respiratory late like i said minute volume also high tidy volume and high respiratory rate all these alarms are there so these are the faces of the alarms and each of these alarms should not be silenced never silence of mute your alarm look at try to look into the problem of the alarm and rectify it 
and when you go into the alarms always start from the patient end first then the ventilator tubings and then the ventilator this is the sequence of events when you see alarms you need to first look at the patient clinical examination you look at the patient hear the patient that means hear the chest then look at his tubes look at the circuit and then look at the ventilators and after that we can order the tests there are some alarms which are life threatening which need to be tackled immediately there are some alarms which give you time and we can look into the matters apnea alarms important technical alarms which are also called as the input alarms are the high or low fio2 low fio2 would mean there is no oxygen supply or high fio2 would mean there is no air supply electrical power failure these are inbuilt into the machines thank you